My name is Lieutenant Colonel Rory Feely. I am the Commanding Officer of the United States Naval Test Pilot School at Naval Air Station, Patuxent River, Maryland. Here at the Test Pilot School, I'm responsible for teaching pilots and engineers to build better helicopters and airplanes. We teach pilots from the Army, Air Force, Navy and Marines. They come to school just like you, they get lots of homework just like you, and then they go fly some really cool airplanes and helicopters. And this is my ride, the Black Hawk helicopter. The Black Hawk helicopter carries people and supplies for very long distances. It can land on ships and on dry land. It doesn't even need an airport. It can fly over 180 miles an hour, which is three times faster than your parents can drive on the highway. It can also go all the way up to 19,000 feet. Unlike airplanes, helicopters can stop in midair. This is called hovering. It could land in your backyard if your backyard was big enough and didn't have too many trees. The United States Naval Test Pilot School has five Blackhawks. We use them to teach students how helicopters fly when they're going fast and slow, and how to fly very low and very, very high. As a test pilot, my job is to make sure the helicopter is safe to fly and that the military can use it to defend the United States of America. Now let me show you the different parts of my helicopter. This is the body. We call it the fuselage. This is the engine which powers the helicopter just like the engine in your parents' car. The Blackhawk has two of them and they're really powerful. These engines spin these wings on top, which we call rotor blades, and they make the helicopter fly. The tail, which includes these fins, called horizontal and vertical stabilizers, helps keep the helicopter flying straight. The smaller rotor, which is mounted sideways, is called the tail rotor. The part of the helicopter where the pilot sits is called the cockpit. Now let me show you how it works. The cockpit has two seats up front, one for the pilot and one for the student. We can also put more seats in the back to carry passengers, or take the seats out and put in supplies to deliver, or instruments that measure how the helicopter is behaving. This stick is called the cyclic. You push it forward to make the helicopter go forward, and you pull it backwards to make the helicopter come backwards. Pushing the cyclic to the side causes the helicopter to fly sideways. This is how it works. The rotor blades up top form a spinning disc, and when I push forward on the cyclic, it tilts the disc down, making the helicopter fly forward. And when I push sideways on the cyclic, it tilts the disc sideways, making the helicopter fly sideways. That's how it works. This lever is called the collective lever. You pull it up and down to make the helicopter go higher or go lower. It works by turning the rotor disc and making the helicopter fly up or fly down. These pedals on the floor control the nose of the helicopter. They work by controlling the tail rotor at the back of the helicopter. Not only does the tail rotor allow the pilot to control where the nose is pointing, but it keeps the fuselage of the aircraft from spinning because the engines are pushing the rotor blades around. Think of it like when you're sitting in a swivel chair spinning really fast. The big rotor blades up top are spinning like this. And if we didn't have a tail rotor, the helicopter body would start rotating in the opposite direction. But I can stop them by using my feet on the pedals and controlling the tail rotor. That's how it works. I became a test pilot because I really love flying and I really love science and math too. When you're a test pilot, you get to do both. So that's why I became a test pilot.